it's back again. This is the review show. The Jose special returns are supposed to be Arsenal, Chelsea and Liverpool keep up the challenge, and dare we say Manchester United are joining the race? All that on today's OTC podcast. Hello and welcome back to the OTC podcast with myself, Reagan Walsh, and my co-presenter, Bradley Morris. How are you on this Monday morning, Brad? Oh, fuck Mondays. <laughs> Agreed. But the, in, in more positive news, it's nice to be back home for a change. Yes, it always is. Right, as ever, we're going to be talking our way through the weekend's action in the Premier League. Have a look at any big talking points across Europe and have a delve into the world of women's football as well and any other business there's only one place to start and that is of course in london where yesterday tottenham Hotspur beat arsenal 2-0 thanks to goal a beautiful goal from hyung min's son and then a goal from harry kane just before the stroke of half the time i mean what are your thoughts on the game overall brad i believe this is the one we call the jose special yeah absolute jose masterclass it was Second half, not very desirable for the neutral. No, but they did. They did what they needed to do. Exactly. And I think that was always going to be the intention from Spurs: is try and get as a goal as early on as possible as they c- could, and then they go back because I think defensively they knew they were a stronger side than Arsenal's attack. Arsenal are going to threaten them. <laughs> yeah, they're going to threaten them, but. I think Spurs would always be. I had the chances. I think they just didn't. Mm. It's just one of them where you think if we had a inform, I don't even know what an inform Arsenal is anymore. So I can't really say that. But if you had a goal scoring front line on a I, I, basis, I know what an inform Arsenal is. It's something that's only open on Thursdays. True, definitely a Thursday night in the Europa League when they can put four past Rapid Vienna. Even we couldn't do that years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Fair play to Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think Mourinho done it well. That song goal, though, was <sighs> just sublime. Yeah. That man does not get talked about enough in the world-class arguments. Mm. I mean, he's now got as many league goals this season as Arsenal. Like, I, th- I think is he the first into double figures this season? I, I believe he is. I, but I, I believe Calvert Lewin got there a while ago. Yes, Calvert Lewin's got uh, two, uh, one more goal than him. So they are very close. But I mean, who else in, in the world of football? I'm trying to think. Um, who else has got double figures this season? Haaland and Lewandowski, obviously. Um, I don't know whether anyone in the league, no, no one in the league does. And over in Italy, it'd probably be maybe Zlatan or, yeah, Zlatan's the only one in Italy. So, yeah, they're all getting the praise. They are mother free, yet Son doesn't seem to be getting the same appreciation as... Uh, it feels like Kane gets them more free. Than, is that yeah. Feels like? Yeah. yeah. I think it's because Kane's been got a lot of his assists though, and it's usually vice versa. And offering more to the the rest of the team. Yeah, I think people are more surprised by Kane getting ten assists as well, rather than the sun goals. But you've got to actually remember, whilst. Uh, Kane has to provide it someone does have to actually finish it off and it happens to be Son and not all these goals have been tapping so a lot of them have been well worked goals and well especially the one yesterday was a well yeah. uh, well struck goal so the second one was pure counter attacking brilliance yeah it's absolutely brilliant counter play from um, Spurs Um Mikel Arteta seemed disappointed after the game because of Thomas Partey going off at 
half time due to re injuring some part of himself. Though you've got to say, so. yeah, I, I don't know what he was moaning about because. So, so you would know. rather him try and run after him with one leg, would you? <laughs> Just, yeah, like, yeah and like, like, keep him out for longer. He's than... not going to get there anyway. Well, yeah, they wanted him out longer than a he would have. He's going to be, because I mean, I imagine now he's probably going to miss maybe two weeks and come back around just in time for the festive period. But if he carried on, he would have been missing until the new year. It's like he would have made a comeback around uh, the FA Cup weekend, and you're just like, what are you complaining for? And then he didn't he also say like. Um, Something about oh, he was happy with the amount of crosses that they did, or something weird like that. I'm like, yeah, you, well, done. you you made 44 crosses with an accuracy of 20.5 percent. That's not something to be writing home about because last time I checked, winning crosses doesn't win you football games. He's following the Jamie Redknapp analysis trope, and <laughs> yeah, so you can, as long as you find good forward, doesn't matter what you have there. Mm. We need to talk about that score analysis. Like, what the fuck was that? Oh, oh I have no idea. If, 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 not, if someone somehow tuned, just tuned in for that bit, why well, you do that? I don't know. But they just tuned in for that bit and they don't actually see the game. Do you think they'd lost? You would think. <laughs> you'd think yeah, you'd think Spurs have lost, or at least got like a last minute draw, rather than they actually won the game and played really well. I mean. I don't care. Technically how... not technically not wrong. But yeah. yeah. We've said they so if they're losing, they're gonna go for the boring performances, but yeah. That's Mar- that's Mourinho <laughs> don't do it. Yeah, it, Mourinho has been doing that for the past fifteen twenty years. Yeah. Oh, how, how dare Tottenham fans not criticize their manager for being top of the league. Yeah, for the first time in however long been top after eleven games. Allow them. Exactly. I don't. Care. If I'm a Tottenham supporter, I don't care how we're playing as long as we're top of the league. I'm going to be happy. Uh, the result also leaves Arsenal down in 15th place, which just seems ridiculous. So I got, I got a, a nosebleed looking that far down the side. <laughs> I don't know. It's crazy to see them that far down. Um, I don't even know what to do with Arsenal, how he fix it short term or long term. I think there's going to be a lot for them to look at. It'll be interesting to see uh, what happens in January uh, transfer-wise. Uh, next up for both teams in the league, Spurs have uh, another London derby. This time they'll be playing against Crystal Palace and Arsenal host Burnley. Um, so it'd be you would expect Arsenal to get back into that one. But sounds, uh, like, we'll look. sounds like a tough relegation six pointer. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into more of that uh, in the preview show later on this week. Elsewhere in the Premier League, Liverpool put four past Wolverhampton Wanderers. Goals from Mohamed Salah, Jorginho, one out of John Matip, and then an own goal from Nelson Semedo gave Jurgen Klopp side the three points. Bit of a shock score, this. Wolves are defensively with it all. Yeah, I, I, I just I don't know what happened to it. I don't think I've seen Wolves play this bad in a long time in there. Oh, I've seen them play bad under Nuno, just saying. But, <laughs> but uh, it did have flashes of the, the 4 1. Or years ago against Villa, they just capitulated defence. Mm. I just. It's a strange one for the Wolves considering how compact they have been in recent seasons in the Premier League defensively. They look like they're all. They always seem to be like a hard team to beat when it comes to defensively. But Liverpool seem to make it rather easy for themselves. Yeah, it's all about Liverpool. But for Wolves, it just seemed like they were missing Jimenez. Yeah, which hopefully he continues to make a speedy recovery. Mm, yeah, and is uh, 
back playing football as soon and safely as possible. Um, Trent made his substitute appearance in the second half, which was uh, good to see him back so early. I didn't think he would be back for no, maybe was... another week or so. Yeah, I heard it was only a month. Yeah, mm. He came on and did Trent things. Yeah, uh, good performance. And then, um, got to say, Diogo Jota as well. He did well when he came on with like uh, 14 minutes left. Uh, so Liverpool stay in second place whilst Wolves uh, slip down to 10th. Um, it, it was also just nice to see Klopp smiling. For once. It was smart. The only time he's ever any smiling is if he's having a pop at Chris Wilder. <laughs> um, at least he wasn't this time. Um, elsewhere in the That's probably why he was smiling. <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he just saw the Sheffield score as he left off. Oh, <laughs> Elsewhere on yesterday's fixtures, Leicester City uh, beat Chris Wilder, Sheffield United 2 1, with goals from Iose Perez and a 90th minute winner from Jamie Vardy. Uh, Oli McBurney had scored for the Blades a couple minutes after Perez uh, initially scored. Gotta say, oh, I think Sheffield. <laughs> Leicester fully. Well, yeah. I mean, one point off 11 games. We were talking about it last week, where they're doing even worse in the 2007-2008 Derby County side. Mm. Questions are going to have to be starting getting asked, surely, of Chris Wilder yeah. and the selections. Yeah, and what's defining of teams in relegation battles is their ability to hold on when they have the results in their grasp and the it just happened. It just, happened. That yeah. was why Villa were in it that badly last season. We just couldn't hold a lead or a draw at any point. Yeah. I mean, you got to say, when it comes, when you, especially in a big relegation, right, yeah, you're not going to beat all the best teams above you. And you'd rightly say Leicester are a high quality team, but they've got to do better. Uh, and try and not concede so late as they did. I mean, yeah, they'll be annoyed with the result. And if you said 2 1 looking into the weekend, I think most Sheffield United fans would have taken that in the context of like how many goals Leicester could easily have scored past them. But obviously, disappointed with the result, even them one point from 11 and five points away from West Brom and Burnley, who are also in the relegation zone. It, it couldn't have got much worse for them having the Sheffield Wednesday fan behind school. <laughs> the last minute win. Well, yeah, exactly. And I think that's one of the uh, worst things about it for them. Um, the other game on Sunday saw Crystal Palace head to the Hawthorne and absolutely destroy. I wonder what was in their half time. What was in their half time drinks? What was in the, what was in the orange slices they were having? I would love to know. That would give me some energy on a Monday morning. That would, Jesus. Four second half goals for Palace. Benteke getting a brace and Wilfred Zahar also so, so, getting a repeat brace. That. Repeat that last piece. What? Exactly. Christian Benteke getting a brace as well as Wilf Zahar. Though West Brom did play the majority or oh, all the second half and the last 10 minutes of the first half with 10 minutes after Mateus Pereira got sent off. Uh, straight red card. Um, very shock result. I've got to say, even in terms of like how bad West Brom have been this season, I, I wasn't expecting Palace to put five past them. Well, if you can say you'd fall if to Palace, then you, you, there you, you have issues. <laughs> you deserve to be relegated, I think. Like, it, it, take... was just, it was just lovely to see Christian Pentake turn back the gears. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it always looks like it's West Brom. It, like, mm. We all know what his halftime song was. If I could turn back time. <laughs> uh, 
that result moves Palace up to 11th place um, on 16 points, while West Brom uh, are in 19th with six points, uh, conceding now 23 goals in the Premier League season. On Saturday's fixtures, the weekend got underway with Burnley taking on Everton, and it was uh, Sean Dyche's side that took a very early lead through uh, Robbie Brady, but that was cancelled out shortly before half time thanks to Dominic Calvert-Lewin scoring his 11th goal this Premier League season. Decent first half in that game, but then it just seemed to mm. get dull in the second half, if you ask me. Yeah, it lost its dead, I guess. But for Burnley, that's exactly the result they need more to avoid the relegation battle. Yeah, it's the perfect result for... Well, not the perfect result, but it's a good result for them. Mm. I mean, they're it's now... It's the starting uh, point. Yeah. They're now a point behind Fulham. Um, level on points with West Brom, but they do have that uh, game in hand. So I think... Uh, was it Manchester United they were meant to play opening weekend? I believe so, yes. Yeah, Man United. It's the same weekend we were supposed to play in Man City. Yeah. So, although it's going to be hard for Burnley to win that game in hand, it's still a step in the right direction. Oh, oh, for Chris, hard to win Clarence. that game in hand is something you really shouldn't have said then. <laughs> yeah, oh, I know. It's going why, to come back to why would you say that? <laughs> He's going to bite me back. Um, Did this weekend's game not tell you enough about Man United? Well, yeah, but then it also taught me that Man United are still Man United and can come back from anything. Um, you got to say, though, Everton, from how brilliant they looked at the start of the season to now how shaky they're looking. Yes, they won against Fulham uh, a fortnight ago. But they're just looking shaky in the league now. They just everyone was talking about, oh, could this actually be the season Ancelotti gets them winning a title or looking like a top a good top four team? And now they're ninth in the league and they've just been playing poorly. I think. Mm. I don't want to say that they've been found out or anything, but James Rodriguez has been less of an influence. Yeah. No, I do think he seems to have gone quiet at the last four or five games compared to what he was like in the opening uh, five games for the Toffees. Uh, the following game saw Manchester City welcome Scott Parker's Fulham to the Etihad Stadium. City won that game 2 0, uh, early goal from Raheem Sterling, and then a penalty from Kevin De Bruyne. Wrapped up the three points for Pep Guardiola's side. Um, credit to Fulham for only conceding <laughs> the two goals. You got to say, well done, lads. you didn't concede five. Well done. <laughs> that's that, that's the spirit. <laughs> Is I mean, that how low we Personally, yes. I mean, considering uh, Man City shipped five past Burnley last week, I was expecting quite a similar result this weekend. From the, if I'm honest, I don't know. I just I don't know why City. I don't know. I was expecting more from them. Mm. But um, yeah, no surprise really with the result. Uh, City move up to sixth again. They've got a game in hand over the top four, uh, so they're on 18 points. So they could go level on points with Leicester if they win that game. And Fulham, like we said, they're just outside the relegation zone on seven points. Um, next up on Saturday, saw West Ham play Manchester United at the London Stadium. The first game in the Premier League that had fans back in it with an attendance of 2,000, which was good to see. It was lovely. It was so lovely. Getting fans back in the Premier League. It's, yeah. it's 2,000, but yet it uh, still feels quite loud. Yeah. Which is... Uh, I think that anything, I think even a couple hundred fans would have made like a big difference compared to what we've been having recent in the last uh, nine months without uh, fans in football. Mm. Uh, the Hammers did take the lead just before half time, thanks to Thomas Suchek getting on the score sheet for David Moyes' side. And then uh, 
Goals in the second half from Paul Pogba, Mason Greenwood and Marcus Rashford inspired an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer comeback and uh, gave the Red Devils the three points, uh, moving them up to fifth place in the league uh, on 19 points. Again, with that game in hand against Burnley, they could obviously move into the top four. Uh, we've dealt with them on 22 points, yeah, which would be level with Chelsea. Um, obviously, if they played their game in hand like straight away, but obviously, I have no idea when that game in hand is going to be rescheduled for. No, they've just not rescheduled anything. And is it? <laughs> is it? You know, I didn't thought about that. <laughs> Technically, yes, they are on the base of points in the game in hand, as, as we was just saying. Do I realistically think so? Absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely no. not. But I had this thought after that game. Liverpool wait 30 years to win a league title and then they can't celebrate it with their fans how typical of Man United would it be they've had 6-7 years of badness and not look like winning the league title but the year Liverpool can't celebrate it they see they go to celebrate it in the league so like within the few months of Liverpool trying to celebrate it Man United like yeah lads Get back to your corners. It's our league title to celebrate now. Yeah, fuck your twenty. <laughs> yeah, fuck your tw- No, they're on nineteen. Yeah, but they're going for the twenty. Yeah. <laughs> just, they're going, they're just, going for the leveler with Man U, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, this would be the leveler if they were to win it back to back. But oh, just it, I, I, that literally just came to my head on Saturday, and I was like, that would be absolutely incredible scenes to see Liverpool have their say title parade in like March or April a month or so later but you know I did have won the league somehow under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and this team and then they're celebrating their 21st I thought like they wouldn't even do a parade it just would have been long gone by then what Liverpool yeah yeah but if you remember when I wouldn't want to celebrate even that like it, the, yeah. the magic of it wears off a little bit I, I think though they will because it was although been... I'm not a Liverpool fan so I can't yeah, I think if it was any other team that had won the league in the last eight to ten seasons, I don't think they would do. Like Man City, uh, Chelsea, well, they're the only two times, uh, two teams that have won it in the last few years. Um, obviously, excluding Liverpool. So, literally, what you're saying is that the total parade happens, the trophies there in the red ribbons, but then they just notice the back of it. Hang on a minute, what was there some black on it? Why is there some white and black on it? What, what? Yeah. For me, uh, I do think that Liverpool will celebrate it no matter what because of it being so long. But um, good comeback from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's side. Um, what, is it, what does it say 2021 Manchester United on the bottom? <laughs> uh, no, I think there's no way it happens. No. Nah, uh, we can all dream, but I don't think it happens. Um Again, it took for Bruno Fernandes to come on in the second half to light the Red Devils up. This is a little concerning that he he's still having to be the big playmaker in this. Oh, um, it's obvious he's the big player for you. Lot. Oh yeah, I'm not taking that away from him. But <laughs> you're not going to play him. You're going to look a bit short. And it's a it's a bit surprising that they couldn't do anything pre him entering the match at halftime. And um, there was a lot of controversy over. Yes, yeah, so we're going to talk about this first goal. <laughs> uh, the goal for United because the ball seemingly had gone oh, out sorry, of play. Sorry, what's that? Wiggly VAR, disgrace. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the ball had gone out of play, but uh, the one angle it. makes it look like it's gone out. <laughs> it just... mm, but you can't that. tell because there's no straight line cameras in that. Yeah, and I think the another but, thing was in the one they were reviewing. That the angle they showed was literally the worst angle of the ones they were showing. Yeah, out of all the angles well, they decided to choose, why would you choose that one? And then, the, but I was like, is there actually like you see the linesman flag for it when the ball's gone out for a corner, like uh, when the corner kick's just gone straight out. You know, when someone tries that like in swinger, but it just doesn't work from a corner, um, and he just goes straight back out of play. He's like, well, surely the linesman would have looked up the line. 
or maybe he wouldn't have paid that much attention because he's too focused on um, if there's a foul happening. But you would think he would say, all right, ref, I can see the ball. It's behind the line and flagged for it. But the line was running, but running back, like trying to look back as well, which is difficult to do. But yeah, yeah. he shouldn't have been trying to run back. He was still sort of just stopped for a second, let it come back and then bolt forward. Yeah, it's a very strange one, but I think United were going to score either way in that second half. They looked a lot more lively. I mean, it's controversial about Paul Pogba. Oh, what, a, what a goal. <laughs> oh, absolutely brilliant from Pogs. Uh, final game of the Saturday action and the final game that we're going to talk about in the Premier League because the of the game haven't ha- hasn't happened yet as the time recording was Chelsea uh, entertaining Leeds United at Stamford Bridge uh, again uh, attendance of 2,000 fans um, Leeds took an early lead thanks to Patrick Bamford after some great play from uh, Calvin Phillips he always who, scores away yeah you got to say Patch, um, Calvin Phillips has been such a key player for Leeds yeah. this season I wish we'd signed him last summer. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the lead lasted until just before the half hour mark when Olivier Giroud continued his great form this week, uh, getting his fifth goal in one and a half games, uh, scoring from Arish James uh, cross, and then second half goals from Kurt Zimmer and Christian Pulisic gave the Blues all three points. Um, Got to say, Chelsea thoroughly deserved that. I Olivier think. Giroud is the most underrated striker in the Premier League. Yeah. Maybe even Premier League history. <laughs> is it getting in the debate? You <laughs> can't lie. Uh, it's uh, getting uh, Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not, I'm just trying, uh, it wasn't me like uh, blanking, blanking, are you, what are you talking about? But it's one of them was like, you know what, he actually is. He, he He's one of them where he's just, he just doesn't seem to be Like you think you look at what he's done since moving to Chelsea, he's won the Europa League with them. Um, he won the World Cup with France, was he? A part yeah, he was, of the, he was a key figure in that team, yeah, a key figure in Didier Deschamps' team. Even when um, I was going, What the fuck is he doing in that team? <laughs> Just, he's, I think, the third all time top goal scorer in French history. Well, it wouldn't surprise me if he was, but yeah. Uh, I don't know whether it's because he, he, he's not one to, like, he doesn't seem to start under Lampard because obviously of the signings that they've made. But I think, I think it's just because of the certain type of striker he's. Yeah. He's not the most attractive striker in terms of I think you'll find like he's, he's playing. I think you'll find he's the most attractive striker. <laughs> Well, yeah, he is definitely the most attractive striker. <laughs> but in terms of like his style of play, it's not the best to watch. But he'll always get you a goal. And once again, he's proven those wrong. And um, Chelsea are looking, like we said previously, our uh, proper title challenges this season under Frank Lampard. Two points off uh, Spurs and Liverpool in third place. So they did go top four. A few hours before the games yesterday, um, Leeds United are in 14th, uh, level on points with Newcastle having played their game more than uh, the Magpies. I think for me, this is where I expected Leeds to be. I yeah. don't get it. For me, I didn't understand all this pre season hype. Oh, Leeds are going to be the best team to have been promoted in history of Premier League football because of Marcelo Bielsa and they're going to have an easy top 10 finish. I understood the hype because I'd, I'd seen it first hand for two seasons. I'd watched it. I just thought it was slightly too much. Because Yeah, I think I, it was... I, yeah, it's completely overestimated the jump from the Championship to the Premier League. Yeah. And the quality, like, don't get me wrong, the Championship is a hard league to get out of, if not the hardest league, and it might be somewhat 
better than the Premier League in terms of difficultness. But then you've got to realise you've got to come up against teams that are, can spend 200 to 300 million mm-hmm. in a transfer window. And it's always going to be hard to get results. It's, it's about sure master ability. It's, I think for championship clubs when they go up, we found this out, it's adapting your style to the Premier League. Yeah. And you know, sometimes it's going to work against certain clubs because there are teams that will sit back and just let you do your thing. And then there are others mm-hmm. that are going to be more open on you and then you can do your thing on. Yeah. But for me, I think this is the roughly where I expected Leeds to be this season. I'd be table for it. Yeah. Um... Final game this weekend, we'll see Brighton and Hervalvian take on Southampton uh, this evening. Um, we talked a little on the game on uh, the preview show. I think you got to say, uh, the Saints are going to look favourites heading into this one. I think they're playing a lot better football than Brighton. And I think this will be a lot more interesting than it probably makes the It's quite an even even clash yeah it could be it's one of them where on their day Southampton can be really good but they I'm trying to their last few results against Brighton if I remember correctly they have seemed to struggle against the Seagulls I may be wrong there but I do think it's not as easy as it does seem to be uh, oh no, sorry, I've just heard a look. Brighton are winless in their last six games against Southampton, drawing four, losing two. So yeah, it is hard. I mean, they've only lost two in their last six. But uh, you got to say, for me, the Saints are just slightly favourites. Mm. Elsewhere in the world of football, we now look at the Bundesliga. Uh, the big game that we talked about on our predictions was uh, Bayern Munich versus RB Leipzig, um, a very entertaining 3-3 draw for the neutral fans, though um, Bayern are going to be disappointed. Uh, the goal scorers for Leipzig were Christopher Nkunku after 19 minutes, Justin Kluivert and Emil Forsberg were the other two goal scorers for them. And then Bayern's goal scorers were Thomas Muller with a brace and uh, 17-year-old Jamal Musiala. Is it? English players in the Bundesliga. Another one. Again. <laughs> Another. <laughs> I mean, what is it with you are right, English these... players in just playing good in, in, in Germany? I think it's because they get Is it just tired. the style? They, they just suit the style or something? I think it's that they know there isn't really the pressure of to develop quickly because the media is not going to be on their backs straight away, where if you look at it, how often do the media criticise Phil Foden, Marcus Rashford, Mason Greenwood for how they're playing, if they're playing poorly over a spell of games? And like, they're still like, or especially Foden and Greenwood, they're not even 20 yet. And you're just like, you're not allowing them to have time to blossom into an actual footballer. And that seems to be the case now. So I think it's especially for an up-and-coming prospect, it's the best thing to do is to head to Germany or other places abroad. Mm. Uh, the results is the two sorry, um Well, Bayern stayed top on 23 points and uh, Leipzig have dropped down to third now because of uh, Bayer Leverkusen's result at the weekend uh, after they put three pouts to Schalke yesterday. Uh, Patrick Schick... Julian Baumgartlinger and Amalik Theol own goal um, gave them the free results. Uh, three points. You gotta say, though Dortmund only managing a one-one draw against Frankfurt was a bit surprising. I think now you gotta look at the Bundesliga and say it's a Bayern. It's Bayern's to lose realistically, which always seems it's to be always, the case. Yeah, it's always Bayern's to lose. It's just whether Leipzig or Dortmund can make the step up. Or even Leverkusen this season. Mm. Um, Over in Italy, uh, Juventus beat fellow Turin rivals Torino 2-1. Late second half goals from Weston McKinney and Leonardo Bonucci. 
gave Juventus the win despite going uh, 1-0 down very early on through Nicholas and Kulu. Um They did have a goal just before the hour mark ruled out for our side for, from uh, Juan Cuadrado. Um, it was no surprise there that Juve came back to win it, but um, i got to say it's a bit of a shock at how long it took them to come back and actually score. Uh, elsewhere in Italy, uh, Milan carried on their incredible form this season after beating Sampdoria 2-1. Goals from Samu Castellejo and a Frank Kersi penalty gave uh, Milan all three points and a late Albin Ekdal goal couldn't sacrifice or suffice anything else for Sampdoria. Um, it's really surprising to see how well Milan are doing this season, if you ask me. Yes, getting back in the TARDIS because we really are turning back time. I ain't seen Milan top for five points. <laughs> um, absolutely crazy. Um, their city rivals, Inter, played Bologna on Saturday and won 3 1 thanks to a Romelu Lukaku goal and a brace from Ashraf Hakimi. Uh, Bologna did score uh, one through Emmanuel Ugenato. Um Again, into second place, but it's one of them. They don't really play that good football to make you think they could actually win the league at times, do they? And from what I've seen, I don't know. They don't scream title challenges. No, but I feel I like I haven't seen enough to to know. No, for me, they. I think the there's there is just something about this inter team where you're like they're always going to score goals and they're going to get the wins against the lesser teams, but against like the top six or seven teams in Italy, I think they just struggle with it because they just don't seem to get the right lineup and the right setup under Antonio Conte. I just um, the only thing I got of Inter was. The per- doing the rounds of Christian Eriksson just looking depressed as fuck. Oh, he's aged terribly over the last. That poor 10, guy. He, he went. Months. He goes to Milan and thinks, right, see out my career. I'm hopefully here. A nice little time in Italy. And now he's even more depressed than he was under Jose Mourinho in London. Mm. I mean, I don't think it helped that uh, the first three, four months due to the. Uh, ongoing pandemic that he had to fake into the, the training ground. Gosh, I didn't know that one. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, he was, I remember it came out earlier uh, towards the back end of last season that he was. Was this when Italy was not really getting? Yeah, yeah this, this is this is when Italy was like so bad, like the worst in Europe, if not the world at this stage. He, he because of it being like in total lockdown, like he was staying at the training ground, so. Uh, he had nowhere to go, um, but I think um, I think he'll be able to leave in January. I don't think they're gonna um, stop him from leaving. I'm sure I've seen some quotes over the weekend where it said um, he'd be allowed to leave if he wanted to, or um, a bid had come in for him. I think. It wouldn't surprise me if he does leave because, he, like you said, he has failed to settle in at uh, Inter Milan. Um, over in Spain now, um, Real Madrid got back to winning ways after beating Sevilla 1-0 with um, a Bono own goal. You, are you going to get a U2 joke in there? Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> The result sees Real Madrid stay... You don't get porn commentary from me, sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Madrid stay in fourth place, um, now on 20 points, six points off uh, the league leaders and city rivals, Atletico Madrid, who have pay, played a game less than them. Sevilla dropped down to sixth place on 16 points. And the other big game on uh, Saturday... Uh, so, or one of the big games saw so Atletico Madrid beat Real Valladolid 2-0 uh, Thomas Lamar and Marcus Lorente with the goals uh, for Diego Simeone side to keep them abreast of the top of the table leading Sevilla, uh, Real Sociedad sorry, by 
uh, one point, having played two games less than them. Um, you got to say, I think it's Atletico's to throw away now this title. Is it? I mean, still think there's slightly openness to it. I don't, I still think Real Madrid are always going to be a, to the challengers for it, but you, know, you can't rule anything out with how it's been this season. Yeah, but I get to say, Atletico are looking solid defensively. I mean, they've only conceded two goals all season. No, it's a shame. Yeah, I guess. But, but like you say, anything can happen in the world of it, football. Uh, you want you two jokes on this podcast? I'll give you one. Oh. So obviously, Real Madrid, they've been missing Cristiano Ronaldo. They've never replaced him, you could say. They still haven't found what they're looking for. <laughs> Thank you. About one game too late there, but as we were on to Atletico, but I will take it. Um, the surprise of the weekend. Really more red for... <laughs> <laughs> the surprise of the weekend in La Liga saw Cadiz take all three points against Barcelona. Goals from uh, Alvaro Jimenez and Alvaro Negredo um, gave Cadiz. The three points and Barcelona themselves didn't even score because it was a Pedro Alcala, Alcala, Alcala with the own goal just before the hour mark. Where do we even start with Barcelona? I have nothing else to say on this club. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm genuinely speechless. I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd, well, yeah, I'd We've seen all that is needs to be said about this team. I don't know how you can fix it either in the short term. Like, there's no you, quick you fix, fix about it. You, you take the L this season, you regroup, and you fucking have a look at everything. Every single thing needs looking at. That club yeah. is in an awful place. It's burning from the inside out. you got to say. But it's, it's okay. Javi's the same. <laughs> he, he won't um, Messi does he leave does he sign a pre-contract in January with either Man City or PSG or do you think he stays with Barca when are the presidential election things that they do March yeah he's gone he's not even going to wait so much he's, he'll, be, he'll be out of there yeah. Well, now January, either he signed straight away from, from Man City or the pre contract. So. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. Though um, Neymar does obviously want to play with him again because uh, he said to ESPN after their Champions League game, What I want most is to play with Lionel Messi again for sure. We have to play together next year. Don't play on FIFA then. <laughs> yes. come with your club. <laughs> No, they'd have to get rid of him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They'd have to get rid of uh, one of the big players if they were to, uh, what do you call it, tr- even try and afford Messi's wages because it's just not something that they'll be able to do. Um. Well, yeah, I don't even know how you try and fix Barcelona in this short um short term or even long term at this minute in time um onto a bit of transfer news because your club and my club are involved in this there was a story (laughs) don't start this loads of clubs are linked to it when you read the article i just found it funny because it was uh just lingard has been talked with a move away from manchester united aston villa being one of the destinations and i'm just seeing now a possible Loan move to uh, Real Sociedad uh, for January. Um, we're going to get a lot of rumours now as we get closer to January and the January window. I mean, that man just about makes our bench. Yeah, yeah. I think you'll go. And to our spend. bench is shot. <laughs> I mean, there was even talk of, I saw one story saying it could even sign a year extending contract on United. I'm like, what? That's just not how it works over here. It's not even getting played. Exactly. Um, 
Yeah, I don't see him moving to Villa. I think a move abroad will happen. Um, we've also uh, later. We all know, we all know the club that buys big teams, fringe players. That's Brighton. Well, yeah. Honestly, he he start for Brighton and he'd probably do alright. Well, he he did go on uh, loan there when he was a uh, youngster. It's perfect. Really. If I remember, so it wouldn't surprise me if. Brighton uh, um, do you get sourced off as one of their uh, players uh, there was also talk of Man United looking at Kieran Trippier from Athletic Amateur to give Aaron Wan-Bissaka a bit of competition I was like yeah there's about as much truth in that as uh, there is fucking me Surely. becoming the next fucking Queen of England well that's not I mean is it but yeah, surely you don't want to someone to damage the when Bissaka's progress. No. It's, it's just a load you, of... You're in a position. Think. Do you sign like a young up-and-coming 19-year-old who maybe can challenge him for it? No. Or bring back Dio, or bring back Diogo Delo from AC Milan, who's still yeah. relatively young, roughly the same age as him. Yeah. Yeah, go and buy the heavily experienced one who's already at the top of his game. Yeah, he's currently in the prime of his career. You, you're stifling the prospect. Hmm. Um, bit of news that uh, the Athletic are reporting this morning, and that is uh, that Paul Terry, the brother of John, who is a uh, loan uh, manager uh, for West Bromwich Albion. Uh, so basically, what a loan manager is, he sorts out loan player moves for the youngsters uh, yes. to move away and keeps an eye on them. Um, he's been fined £1,000 and has been advised to seek help over his gambling after admitting 209 breaches of FA betting rules. So basically, um, the story says he has made net losses of over £46,900 on his bets and a reg- an FA regulatory commission heard. Um, he'd placed 34 bets that included competition involving clubs he was involved in. Um, so basically, th- the rules are players, managers, and anyone involved in football professionally or even semi professionally can't bet on transfers or football results um, because obviously they can somehow influence the game based on. Mm-hmm. Uh, the outcome and like getting players to play badly, so it's almost close to match fixing then. Sure. Yeah, it it is practically match match fixing, uh, unless obviously you talk about like transfers, which really isn't match fixing in that sense. But um, obviously this season we've and uh, last season uh, in English football we've seen teams take the uh, knee over the Black Lives Matter. Um, so we, we, we go into this, but I don't even think these those idiots need the air time. It's just no. you know. I'm just going to talk briefly. Um, we all know the club that uh, the fans booed for it. I'm not going to mention them, obviously, because it's a disgrace what they did. Um, credit to uh, Derby uh, and even themselves for saying we're gonna carry on and why are you doing it because it's it's not just for like yes it's they it's the predominant one for like black lives matter but that but then booing is just saying they're happy with the racism that's happening in the world of football mm-hmm. and the uh police brutality and all of that all other stuff happening in the world, which is a, a disgrace. Um, on to more positive news. Uh, later on today at five o'clock or six o'clock uh, European time, sees the European draws made for the 2022 World Cup qualifiers. Um, it's going to be interesting to see who the teams get. Um, I'm sure they're already. I mean, yeah, it's crazy to think that we're already qualifying for the next World Cup. Mm. I know it's 
normal to be qualifying like a year and a half before the tournament would start although this one's technically two years before it starts because it's a winter world cup but um yeah it just seems to have come around quickly that uh, the european teams will be getting ready for the um winter world cup uh i th- think the majority of it's going to be done uh the late 2021 after the euros and then any the last couple of games will be done early part of 2022 or they could even be done in the summer of 2022 as the tournament doesn't start until november that year uh, so that's definitely something to keep keep an eye out on to be fair, the qualifiers would make up for having the lack of a tournament in the summer of that period yes so that is definitely something to watch out for uh, over in the Women's Premier League now, um, Manchester United beat Aston Villa 2-0. Uh, again, we both uh, talked about in our previous show for the uh, predictions. Um, although United won, there two goals from Leah Galton and Ella Toon. i got to say, Villa definitely had good chances to score. Should have scored. Maybe should have scored. Yeah. Although the stats would say oh, it was heavily in United's favour, Villa definitely had chances and could have scored themselves. I think a 2 nil result is something they would take. Uh, the result leaves United top of the table, still unbeaten in the league this season. Whilst Aston Villa uh, are second bottom after other results. Um, elsewhere, Ch- How many teams get Chelsea... Right uh, oh, God, I think it is two, if I remember correctly now. So that was the game on Saturday, and then Sunday's games uh, started off with Chelsea playing West Ham. Uh, a Samco hat-trick gave three points to them. Uh, however, West Ham did make it hard for them uh, with a goal from Rachel Daly in the 47th minute and then a late and goal from Magdalena Eriksson uh, made it a very tight ending for uh, the Blues though they also remain undefeated this season in the WSL in third place um, Reading and Bristol City played out a 1-1 draw uh, goals from Emma Bissell scoring her first uh, goal for Bristol City in the league this season and uh, Farrell Williams goal shortly after half time uh, made the points shared there. So Reading are now into sixth, whilst Bristol City remain bottom, still winless this season. Spur, Tottenham Hotspur got their first win of the season, beating Brighton and Hove Albion 3 1. Carries her up, Angelina Addison, and a penalty from Alex Morgan gave Tottenham their first win under new manager, Rian Skinner. Although uh, Brighton did score a penalty themselves through. Dutch won uh, Ernest Kargman. Though it's a very good result for Spurs and maybe things are starting to look up for them. The uh, result moves them up to ninth place, two points behind Brighton. Um, Arsenal put three past Birmingham City. Goals from Caitlin Ford, Jewel Rod, and a penalty from Kim Little. Gave Joe Montemoro side the three points. Um, I think Arsenal should have scored more in that game. Um I think they'll be disappointed to have not scored more. Um, they did have a penalty early on in the game that Kim Little uh, took and it was saved by Hannah Hampton in a uh, goal for Birmingham City. Um, result leaves Arsenal in second place, a point behind Manchester United. Um, they looked, like I said, they looked promising all game Arsenal, though I think they will be a little bit disappointed that they didn't score more. And then the final game in the WSL saw Everton play Manchester City, and it was uh, the away side that won at 3 0 thanks to goals from Ellen White, Gemma Bonner, and Janine Becky uh, in the first half to give the citizens all three points, who have started to look somewhat decent now and are going on a bit of a run after early struggles in the WSL. Uh, right, it's over to you, Brad, for your segments for the remainder of the show. Oh, and to finally prove that we are a real podcast, 
I have now come up with a snappy jingle. Try yourself. Oh, you must be! I do not believe what I've just seen! Very interesting! Oh! Something weird is going on. Shit! Did you see that? <laughs> that is brilliant. Oh, you know, this is the segment I call Did you see this? Before you get onto that, I just want to say um, as we're both big NFL fans that um, the last little bit of it before we get that commentator doing uh, shit that Commentator, you Alan Partridge, how dare you? Sorry, Alan Partridge, not commentator Yeah, whatever but, um, it, Partridge commentator, how do you not know this? Yes, it could be easily pass for one of the BBC Match of the Day commentators, obviously they wouldn't have said shit live on air, but you got to tell me, I think uh, the last four or five, three or four seconds before he does that last bit, tell me that doesn't sound like the start of um, NFL Red Zone or something from NFL Red Zone. I can't remember the NFL Red Zone thing, but like, that's royalty free music. You can't come with me for that one. Yes, um, but all right, let's head on to Did You <laughs> See That? Let's head Did You See So. First, we'll start with the obvious ones. I have this week. I have four of them. <laughs> Some right, of them pretty right. obvious. Probably would have probably would have seen them. But yeah. so, firstly, Jamie Vardy destroying the fuck out of a corner flag. <laughs> Pristine. Yep. In seen that. Beautiful. Broke like sugar. Uh, glass, I think. Yeah. Surprised he didn't um, hurt his ankles with that. Actually. Is that, well, uh, I always wonder what corner flags are made out of. Clearly, full oh, cool. <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember seeing a video um, not too long ago of uh, Ren- Cristiano Ronaldo trying to like do a skill, uh, try and keep the ball in play by the corner flag, and then as he goes to kick the ball, he kicks the corner flag and uh, has to limp off to the side of the field to get some uh, medical treatment. So, um, just gotta get the clip off my second one. Bear with me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, actually, well, they are some sort of just plastic, aren't they? The corner flags. I'm, I'm not sure. I didn't feel. Like, I didn't realize they would break that. Is because any time you've seen someone just just knock one over like that, they've never broke that easily. Um, wasn't there a Man City one that happened last season where they uh, easily broke it as well? If I remember correctly. Is it like a Guerra or someone? Yeah, I, don't, I don't remember, but... Yeah, so, the second moment of the week comes courtesy of the Championship from the absolute legend that is Neil Warlock. The, the facilities that we've got changing was an absolute disgrace today. I want to put animals in it. You know, the, the toilets were blocked up, they've got fumes coming in from a bloody engine outside the dressing room, water everywhere on the floor. It's a disgrace for the Championship. Absolute disgrace. I hope we do the same when we play them up at our place, rather than give them the comfortable... We weren't even uh, social distancing where we were, in, in these cabins, what they put in. We might as well have been in the dressing room. You know, we're too nice, us up there. It's Neil Warnock's post-match comments after the loss to Stoke <laughs> at the weekend. Complain, complaining that the porter cabins had water flowing in, if I Pretty heard correctly. Much. Pretty much, he's just moaning about Stokes' conditions because obviously they're not in the actual dressing room. Yeah, I Prime mean, Warnock. Hmm. Prime um, Warnock. Yeah, Prime Warnock, and uh, it's Stoke City. What conditions are you expecting for Stoke City? Like, I, I think Stoke should be judging how, what Neil Warnock will get bring up for them when they go to Middlesbrough. <laughs> That's what I'm. Oh uh, yeah. He doesn't take these things lying down, doesn't he? No. Thirdly, did you see Stuttgart's second goal against Werder Bremen? Nope. You didn't? Well, I would encourage people to look this online. It's shit hours really, it's finest. So, ball comes over the top. Mm -hmm. And huge lapse of concentration from the defender and the goalkeeper. No communication whatsoever. Player tries to hit it to the keeper, misses. Player, I'll believe one man get to, to go, wait, say it, I'm going to say this right. <laughs> I'm going to say this name right. One man get to go. 
He's for on goal. Empty net. Just walks the ball ever so slowly. Stops the ball <laughs> before he gets to the line. Fights with a key for Tacom and then just boots it in. <laughs> Absolute top class shithousery. And I've just. What's even better? Yeah, the, the Brian and Blight, was it Davy Salka, was clearly very visibly angry at him, almost starts a brawl with him. And uh, who gets booked in all this, do you think? Uh, Selka. I believe he didn't get a single booking, but Wamangituka did get booked. <laughs> uh, for the, for the, uh, for the, for the shit <laughs> Want to point you to the direction he did get booked, Davi Selka. Uh, he did get booked in the end. I, I missed that wasn't in the clip that I sort of booked. And then the he went... got booked. And then he went. I, I know that Salga then went and scored afterwards. Yeah, but they still lost two one. Well. Um, I've just remembered. I actually did. Uh, it was late last night. I saw a video of the, actually of that goal. I didn't see the whole lead up to it, but I did see the where he stopped the ball practically on the line and then smashes it in. Is it? Yes. Well, it, it watched like I was expecting him to fully head it. <laughs> just thought, yeah. oh, you've done it. <laughs> just... Like, uh, did, was it Ronaldinho that did that? I don't know, but we've, we've all tried it. <laughs> yes. And finally, we're saying, remember, we, we've definitely seen it because how do you not miss the fact that Christian Benzake is fucking back? There was a striker, a Belgian striker, but Christian Benzake. There was a striker, a Belgian striker, but Christian Benzake. Two, three, four, nine. Oh, what a hero. <laughs> also, what a great uh, song. I'd also put you in direction of uh, goals. If you look at um, Arsenal's second goal, if you haven't seen it, it is a uh, Arsenal women, that is, uh, a great goal from Jill Broad. So uh, it's build a play on the right hand side uh, from Leonie Meyer. She passes it uh, forward to. Uh, I think it might be Lotten, Lottie Wubamoy who tries to get in. It gets in a cross. Blues uh, deal with the initial header. Then there's quick passing from Maya who gives it to Rod, plays it back to Maya who gives it to Kim Little. Again, it's somehow played back to Jill Rod and then uh, like a pitch and wedging goal, she just gets under the ball and then loops it over uh, Hannah Hampton in the Birmingham City net and it is definitely one of the better goals you will see this weekend and uh, definitely worth a watch if you haven't seen it. Mm. Um, any of the news that you can think of before we wrap up the weekend? Um, Nothing is coming to mind. No, not that. I can't think of anything. Um, Sunderland appointed a new manager um, over the weekend. At the Friday, was it? They appointed their new manager, Sunderland. The, I think, ninth manager in five years. Um, yes, well, Lee Johnson, the man who criticised Aston Villa because we position their away fans in the corner. Yes. I'm sorry, Lee. We must think of those away fans. No, oh. I, I don't understand what he's on about there because aren't most away fans in corners? Yeah. <laughs> like, if you... Apart, the only team the away fans behind the goal, in, we would have won. <laughs> the only away fans that I can think of that aren't in like a corner is um, Bournemouth, because they're at the side of the. I remember correctly. But when I said the corner, that's what I meant. Pretty much the side or. Yeah. And I meant, but, I mean, uh, but there aren't many behind, not directly behind the goal. No, they're really? just slightly off centre to it. <laughs> yeah, Liverpool technically. Just they're just off centre, but not off centre. West Brom, they're away slightly. West Brom, they're off centre. Yeah, there. I don't think there is a team that are uh, take up a, like the whole thing behind the goal directly. They're usually just off centre. I don't remember it used to be being like that. Villa Park, the away fans always had the lower north. Mm. Uh, that is all we have time for this week um, 
we will be back on well we record it on a thursday though it'll be out on friday for uh our preview show where we'll be looking at this weekend's fixtures in the premier league um the one game we already spoke about obviously being uh Arsenal versus Burnley. We have a lot of other big games coming up this weekend. Some very interesting ones. I'm just having a quick look at it. Blooming Nora. Saturday, we might as well call Derby Day. You dare call our game before the Derby? Uh, um, still both it's a Derby to them. It's, a, it's the biggest game of their lives. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, we I mean, obviously, we, also, we all know yours is the St. Julian Trophies Stadium Derby. <laughs> uh, and then there's obviously the Manchester Derby later on in the day, but we'll get onto that later on in the week. Uh, we'll also have a brief look at the Champions League, see if Man United can qualify from their group, if Real Madrid can qualify from their group, if Atletico Madrid can qualify from their group, and any of the news that happens in between now and then. Um, Again, if you're listening on YouTube, make sure you leave a like, comment and subscribe and make sure you're subscribed to us wherever you're listening to our podcasts. Make sure you are following us on Twitter and check out our website as well. And until uh, later on this week, it's goodbye from me and goodbye from Brad. Just one last thing. Give the give the pod a like. Yeah, this poor kid needs a birthday gift. Oh, yes. Thank you. He's trying to keep that fucking <laughs> quiet, old show. Like, oh. It's nothing special. It's only 22. Exactly, sure. Hey, Taylor Swift never thought it was that. Yeah, well, that's Taylor Swift. More I'm music more points. Yeah. Uh, well, he's about to stop playing. <laughs> that's how goes the outro, though. Right, so, uh, thanks for joining us this week, and we'll be back later on and have a look at the yeah, league features, and see you soon.